Brian Cubber back in court on Thursday, and we're going to talk about what exactly that's all about and where everything is at. It's, uh, as you've heard the term used a thousand times on this case, it's a Hail Mary, uh, mm. essentially, to try and get, I think, just death off the table. Ultimately, I mean, the claims almost look like they're trying to get the whole thing dismissed, but I got news for you. That shit ain't going to happen. Uh, but they're, uh, they could certainly possibly uh, get death removed as an option, which could be done by a firing squad. Uh, obviously, this is something that we've been covering for quite some time. It's a very grim image. The doctoral student allegedly using a hunting knife to end the lives of four University of Idaho students and an off-campus resident. Yet, as per documents, uh, Koberger's defense led by Ann C. Taylor, poised to challenge the narrative at its very foundation. At the heart of the defense's claim is an accusation that the grand jury process was fundamentally flawed. This will be argued on Thursday. Taylor contends that the jury responsible for charging Koberger was misled as to the standard of proof required for an indictment. Such an allegation, if substantiated, can have profound implications on the legitimacy of of the proceedings. Moreover, the defense has spotlighted an alleged mishandling of the grand jury selection process. Taylor claims that Leda County prosecutors unduly limited the pool of prospective jurors exposed to the evidence. She emphasized that such limitations might have inadvertently affected the outcome of the jury selection and, by extension, the indictment. Furthermore, Taylor alludes to other unspecified irregularities in the grand jury process, suggesting a more intricate web of issues that demand investigation. Like Harry, who was on the jury, he looked the wrong way for a moment, and Anne is alluding that that might have been something. I'm kidding. I'm making that part up. Uh, but that is really kind of what is going on here. Um, they're looking to poke holes in anything and everything they possibly can to save his life. That is the job of an attorney. Uh, so she is doing her job, as frustrating as it would be, uh, as you look at the case and the evidence continues to mount against Koberger that anyone is sticking up for him, but in fact, there are. Um, an essential facet of Koberger's defense hinges on the whereabouts during the ill-fated night. While the defense team has kept the specifics under wraps, they are uh, very, very loud about Koberger being at a location other than the King Road address. They can say that all they want, but they don't have any evidence of it. No. That is the claim. That is the official alibi. He likes driving at night, and he was out, but he wasn't there. Uh, the DNA evidence, arguably the most crucial piece linking Koberger to the crime, is under intense scrutiny, with the forensic link hinging on a hunting knife sheath reportedly bearing Koberger's DNA. Taylor is leaving no stone unturned. Thursday's hearing will serve as a platform for Taylor's pressing motion to gain access to all communication and documentation pertinent to the DNA analysis in this case. It includes extensive correspondence between detectives, forensic experts, alongside comprehensive reports from labs that involve in the DNA evaluation. Notably, Taylor's request also extends to data where unknown male profiles were identified indicating a strategy to contest, uh, to contest the exclusivity of the DNA match. So if we break that down uh, a little bit there, as we've been talking about for a while, they're getting expert witnesses on deck that are claiming that genetic genealogy, eh, it's, it's a science, but it can have errors, which, yes, it can have errors. Like one in some quadrillion uh, is what the current number is against Koberger and the uh, DNA that was found and linked to him. But it's cute. It's cute that they keep coming up with. Oh, cute. my gosh. It could be. What do they call it? Phantom DNA? Phantom you know, DNA. It is cute. Yeah. And I'll give them that. They're really, really pushing this narrative because they're essentially trying to influence potential jurors that are not jurors yet with doubt and something that they essentially wouldn't look up or learn about, which is mm -hmm. most people. Um, so they're doing their job. We'll see where this all goes. I can tell you this, even if. Uh, the court finds that the initial grand jury that indicted him, that there was some sort of flaw in it. You know what's going to happen? They're immediately going to impanel another grand jury that's going to indict him. 
Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. It's not like he's going to get out, get to go to Burger King for a little while, and then, oh, shit, we got you again. Um, so they're, they're going to hopefully dot all their I's, cross all their T's, because that's really what the prosecution needs to be doing on this thing. It needs to be zipped up super tight because Ann Taylor is going through this thing with a microscope trying to find anything they can possibly point at and say, this wasn't done by the book. And even things that were done by the book are being put under a microscope as well. So that's what's happening right now. Not a whole lot new, uh, but who knows? It seems like last week they came up with three or four brand new claims that really had little to no evidence backing them up whatsoever other than wouldn't that be neat if it was true well like you said they've been doing an amazing job trying to instill some doubt in potential jurors and those potential jurors they're we don't even know who they are yet Mm -hmm. so it's the entire population reading these headlines seeing Mm -hmm. these statements made and they're like, huh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, maybe DNA isn't something that can actually define who was in a place, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, I, I don't know. But yet, how many of us have done 23 and Me and we're like, oh, yeah, that's me. That's me. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. I mean, it's, uh, and, and genetic genealogy is different than uh, going directly through like the CODA system. And there's there's so many variants to it. But at the end of the day, it's a science. It's something that they're, they are looking at with a very fine tooth comb. And, and there hasn't been any DNA in this case that has come up that is very questionable. There just hasn't. There are cases where uh, maybe some touch DNA or there's, there's various types that can have more irregularities and, and would have more argument to make. That, however, is not in this case you're locked into the hidden killers podcast want more start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through apple podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a true crime today premium plus member exclusively on apple Podcasts. more of the hidden killers podcast dropping soon press subscribe now